Whether you know it or not, there's a general rule when it comes to any film or television criticism. That is, you should always approach a show or movie on its terms. Case in point, you wouldn't watch an episode of Family Guy or the Barbie movie and then complain it totally wasn't realistic. Of course it's not realistic. That's the point. Likewise, you wouldn't watch a difficult historical drama like Oppenheimer or Saving Private Ryan and then complain that it needed more laughs. That would be kind of missing the point. A show should always be judged on its terms. This brings us to Twisted Metal on Peacock. It's the second road trip post-apocalyptic TV series based on a video game in the past year. That's quite an accomplishment. The other being The Last of Us. And frankly, the two couldn't be more different. The Last of Us immediately established itself as a gripping and realistic drama. It provided a fictional yet plausible explanation for how the world went to shit and dedicated large portions of early episodes depicting survivalist characters carefully allocating and rationing resources to give themselves the best chance to pull through. That's why in later episodes of that show, when people are shown brazenly wasting the same precious materials, it was so frustrating. Either way, Twisted Metal is nothing like that. This show makes no serious effort to explain how anything happened. The power went out and no one could access internet porn anymore, resulting in the apocalypse. Not exactly how I thought the world would end, but upon consideration, it's as good as anything. Now we'll come back to all of this. Let's get on with the basic plot. The show stars Anthony Mackie as John Doe, who works as a milkman. A milkman is someone who travels between cities delivering packages. It's basically the post-apocalypse trade. Anyway, one day while making a drop at San Francisco, John Doe, who has that name because he doesn't remember who he is, gets the assignment of a lifetime. Drive to Chicago and pick up a super special package and return it within 10 days and he gets permanent residence in the city. This is huge because inside the city walls, everyone is well off. It's a beautiful utopia. Outside the walls is a wasteland and it's every man for himself. Like I said, we take the show on its terms. So off the adventure begins. He quickly runs into a distressed woman who doesn't talk much, so he names her Quiet. Their destinations are in the same general direction, so they team up. However, it becomes clear the journey won't be easy. It never is. Ha <laughs> ha. Standing in their way is Officer Joe Biden, who actually cares about the law in this universe. He's looking to end the anarchy and bring back law and order. However, it tends to look more like regulation and bureaucracy, with the utmost importance on ensuring everyone has a license to drive. It's topped with cruelty and an anything I say goes attitude, so I guess fictional Joe Biden is like real Biden. He's also always stoned, that's why it says that on his name tag. But the even greater threat is Sweet Tooth an unpredictable, psychopath clown who lurks around Vegas. After a bit of coming to, he goes on a murderous rampage against, well, Officer Biden. He attacks all the checkpoints and bureaucracy centers. This is very much an every man for himself world, and it's actually refreshing to watch two enemies of the main character duke it out between themselves. Either way, the series follows the road trip formula with each episode being a new stop or obstacle on the way to Chicago and back. Okay, first let's talk about the good. John Doe and Quiet are two very well conceived and written characters. Considering this is from a video game where there wasn't much to go on, their complexity and three-dimensional feel is really impressive. Their relationship and trust grows every episode and comes out with a lot of creativity. This is easily the strength of showrunner Michael Jonathan Smith. He excels as efficient character development. This scene in the first episode where John Doe looks at his family is one of my favorites. It combines character development with the cars in a creative way. Also, the writing team found some unique ways for the two leads to have sex. No boring missionary position here. After them, Sweet Tooth was almost a shock as a villain. He's obviously big and scary, but his personality is that of a genuine crazy person. Completely unpredictable. It's long established that fear of the unknown tends to make the best suspense in movies. In this case, you never know what Sweet Tooth will do next. He's violent and completely unhinged. This all makes him more threatening and exciting to watch than anything you've seen in a while. 
by the time you get to the end and Stu lights his head on fire, you're like, yeah, that makes sense. The show earned this moment. It's so rare to see a villain created so well, and you can almost recommend the series to someone on the strength of this character alone. The actor is Joe Samoa, and the voice is done by Will Arnett. I do have to admit, it was pretty obvious the voice was coming from voiceover. You can sort of tell how it didn't interact with the other sounds in the scene, but that's not really too big a deal. You get used to it, and it's very well done, so it all kind of works together. I should admit I'm a bit of a Will Arnett fan, so I'm a little biased on this. But like I said, it's darn good. Straightforward, the episodes without Sweet Tooth were the weakest of the season. And now it comes to blowing stuff up. That is, the car action scenes. As this is what the game was all about, it's kind of the bread and butter of the show. This was all a lot of fun, as it's something we haven't really seen before. Not like this. Now it was so good, it's a shame that it was mostly lacking. I suppose this is partially due to the budget and not wanting too much of a good thing. But most of the action scenes on foot were kind of lame or even stupid. The stuff in the cars was great. I would easily put the massive car fight at the beginning of the finale as the best part of the season. We only needed more of stuff like this. So now that we've gone through what the show did well, I have to cover at least some of the snacks. I already mentioned that all the action scenes out of the car were weak and sometimes silly. I did not like the fight with the preacher, but unfortunately, that's not the whole of it. First off is character. After the three leads, there's a massive drop off in character quality. Everyone is flat or dull or sometimes just weird. Officer Biden is sort of a generic villain. His resources are never fully understood and his goals are bizarre. As I said, it seems he just wants to recreate bureaucracy. His backstory was pretty interesting until the end with the gratuitous implication he shot an innocent child. Never have I been so emotionally turned against a show. Plus, it doesn't even make character sense as someone like him would panic, experience trauma, and leave it all behind, vowing to never touch a gun again. Except instead here, he doubles down and becomes sort of a ruthless enforcer who will kill and mutilate random innocent people with ease. I'm not buying it. It's a horrible decision masquerading as enlightened social commentary. And now let's look at the biggest problem with this series. You recall at the beginning of the video, I mentioned how we have to take every show on its own terms. Basically, the show itself will tell us what it is and how we should react to it. And so we do. Right at the top, literally the first scene, the show is an action comedy. John Doe is fleeing a mall in a gunfight on wheels. That's all well and good, except the show wants Two things consistent with any action comedy. One, the action is exciting and suspenseful, like any action movie. And two, the comedy is funny and serves to enhance everything else. This is all well and good, except the show does not blend these two at all. Like it's really bad. Here, the comedy constantly subverts the action. Suspenseful and exciting moments are ruined with out-of-place jokes. You see, it's one thing to have a character cracking jokes in the middle of the fight, but they still have to remember they're in the middle of the fight. If the character breaks and just says something stupid that would get him killed, you're taken out of the suspense. Now, if the action was meant to be more cartoon-like or something like the old Batman show, then ridiculous pauses and stuff would work. But here the show asks us to be fully engaged with the fight scenes Except when we do that, it then subverts it with comedy that would get the characters killed. You can't have it both. It does not blend together. The show just can't get out of its own way. The two need to work with each other. Lethal Weapon always did this very well. Likewise, Deadpool succeeded because it sort of emphasized the cartoon style of this technique. In those movies, he's constantly talking to the camera and such, which lets the audience know he's removed from the action in those moments. It doesn't help that most of those moments aren't that funny anyway. The funniest material is outside the action scenes. There is plenty of good stuff, but it all needs to work together better. So considering a basic subscription plan is less than the price of a matinee movie, I think it's worth checking out. I imagine the show will do well for Peacock considering uh, what else is on the network? That said, I feel no urge to rewatch the series, and considering those other options, I'll probably cancel the subscription. And one last thing, I never paid much attention when people talked about representation in movies and media. It just fell on my deaf ears. 
This show made me realize the reason is because represented is not something I ever feel. That is until Twisted Metal came along. Late in the season, there's a bartender with an extreme member. That is to say, an extra large dick. As I watched this scene, a wave of serenity swept over my body. It was like being filled with the Holy Spirit. Finally, finally, there's someone on screen who kind of looks like me. Finally, someone I can relate to. I felt important, noticed. I thank Michael Jonathan Smith and everyone else for including this character because representation matters. So have a great day. I'll see you at the next watch party.